Okay. You said, oh, if only they were to occupy, this, for example, I know it was a metaphor, not literally, a metaphor, one of Thessaloniki or whatever. My question to you is very simple. And then what? What do you expect? I mean, I'm just here a terrible pessimist. I think that if I were, now I'm the bad guy, in the sense of those who want the failure of Greece. I would say, okay, perfect. Let them have a city, and then let's do everything possible to cause a catastrophe there, to give them a lesson once forever that you don't mess with this. How to prevent this? What to do? I mean, I, I'm ready to sell my mother into slavery for your Thessaloniki experiment to succeed, but would it have had a chance to succeed? Just my skeptic. <coughs> Uh, just two other comments on what you said, and then I will come back to Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. Um, uh, Thessaloniki. Yeah, exactly, uh, the, the, the Thessaloniki commune. Uh, what I w uh, on ecology, I think, actually, Slavo, it's, you know, it's true we don't have all the solutions, but again, some solutions are there, but capitalism is incapable of doing them because especially on the ecological level, you do need to have some planning on a global scale. You know, you cannot have the free market. In order to save the planet, you have to have social economic planning, which means, you know, even on internal levels, for instance, to give you one example, the United States, the largest country, most powerful country in the world, a system which reverses the decisions made in the 20s and 30s of making the motor car the central way to travel in that country and bringing back in a cheap and efficient way the railway system. It's not even, it can be done within capitalism. You don't have to. Would you also agree here, yeah. now, a step, because he's not yet here to our good friend Michael Hart, I claim, would you also agree that this means we should, if not, cut with it, at least limit the scope of this pseudo Deleuzean metaphoric of micro, molecular, and so on. We need to rehabilitate large scale, de scale, large scale decisions. We yes. shouldn't be afraid of it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree completely on that. So uh, the ecology in, from that point of view is a very important, you know, everyone moans about it. Oh, the planet is being, oh, this, that. No political leadership anywhere in the world has said what we are discussing today. That it can't be done on its own. This is something which you need the collaboration of continents, not just regions, continents, not just countries, continents if we're going to save the planet from the fate which many, many people have, are now predicting over the next 200 years. The population is growing, not enough water, not enough food, and people still want two cars and two homes. So you see, it's, it's now as if ecology is almost dictating what we need to do, which is completely against the basic instincts and basic functioning of um, capital. Okay, let's come to Thessaloniki now. Now, Slavo, you can't have it both ways. When I said we need to take a city, I didn't have a fully worked out program. But, <laughs> but, but, I would say that Thessaloniki, which is the second largest city in Greece, could then begin to have on every level some things which began to happen but then stopped, for instance, in Argentina. When in a city as large as Buenos Aires, when the system collapsed and when within two weeks, 2003, or when the crash, 2003, 2003 yeah, during the crash, 2003, they had done, the Argentine government had done everything the World Bank, the IMF, and the US Treasury Department asked them to do. Every single measure had been carried out, and the banks collapsed. The politicians were vilified, hated, they couldn't do anything, people's savings were in these bank accounts. Within the space of three weeks, four presidents collapsed. And what did the people do? They said, okay, in a city like Buenos Aires, huge, huge city, very 
similar to European cities, as you know. People began to meet in their own localities, including the upper middle class localities, to say, how are we going to carry on? You had large popular assemblies all over the city who would meet once a month in a larger gathering with delegates to decide how to keep the city going on a very primitive level, but how to keep it going, and they did. Workers who took over their factories and began to produce goods as best they could in those factories and use them as barter to exchange with other people. Now, this was a model which actually did have an impact on that uh, uh, country and enabled Kirshner when he came in to default, not completely, but to a large extent on the debt that Argentina had occurred. And the IMF didn't do anything and the Americans accepted it because they knew there was huge popular support for it. Now, it's something on that sort. In th and what this did is also not just solve the problems immediately, but also politicize and make the people very conscious. And in Thessaloniki, let us say that, for instance, given the fact that there are so many people out of work, a popular representative assembly is discussed very concretely what is the work available, how many people are doing it, who is going to do this, how much money this is, how can this money be spent, etc., etc., starting from a very trivial level of day-to-day -day management and then discussing also the problems which confront the whole of Greece, but essentially keeping the bankers and keeping the local corrupt politicians in Thessaloniki at bay. The, the, I, I once met the mayor of Thessaloniki a few years ago, and I didn't quite suggest this, but I suggested some of the things. He said, he came up to me, he said, I'm an independent, I've been elected mayor of Thessaloniki, and if you ever want uh, uh, an account of how we function in Greece, the, cor the degree of corruption, by both parties, I will give you so much material you can fill volumes on it. Now to remove these people and work with representative, popularly elected representatives, even for a month, would have shown it could have been done on a, on, on a national scale. And on a national scale, there are many things to do, and it may come to this, I'm not joking. If the Greeks manipulate the will of the people, however it's been expressed, uh, then, you know, the, it's not totally impossible that something like this could happen. Those people will then totally lose faith in Parliament. Usually when that's happened, it's the far right who benefits, by the way. Usually. And in Greece, too, as uh, Slavoj pointed out, there are very unhealthy nationalist currents attacking immigrants and saying, you know, build Greece and all that. It's, 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 it's a process we can see. The one problem they have, on a lighter note, is for the ultra-Greek nationalists, what to do about the food? Because most of the food in Greece that you eat, as you know, is Ottoman food from <laughs> Anatolia. What to do? I actually discussed this with one person a few years ago. I said, what would you do about the food? You know, just to provoke. They said, you know, we have all the documents of what they used to eat in ancient Greece, and we can restore all that now. I said, could you tell me just two or three dishes, because I quite like cooking. Nothing. Or you can change names, like after the Turkish invasion of uh, Cyprus, they change in one day. I was in London then. In all Greek restaurants, it Turkish coffee is now called Greek, Greek coffee. coffee. Yeah, that's fine. One solution, yeah. That's fine. It fits in with the times.